Hey guys, it's Sasha. This video might go against everything you've heard in terms of advice on YouTube and everywhere else. In fact, it goes against some of the things that I've previously said as well, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to be hitting the dislike button before I've even managed to finish the sentence, but just hear me out because it's an actual really important point to what I'm saying that I'm going to demonstrate with numbers. Every single bit of advice out there says that you should go and invest in your pension. I've said it before in videos, every single other YouTuber that you watch will tell you exactly the same thing, but it's really important to be aware of how the numbers actually work out and how you might actually be better off not investing in your pension account. Some of the things I'm gonna be talking about, I reckon some people probably don't even know about. And this is exactly why you need to listen up because this is really important. Now, first, let me get straight to the point. <laughs> Saving money for retirement is a good thing. Um, I understand it, I advise it, and I think that it is good to plan ahead for your future. However, there is some things that you need to be aware of when doing the right thing because sometimes doing the right thing and making monthly pension contributions can actually be really bad for you. Here is why. Let's take an average person in the UK earning the average UK median wage. According to the Office of National Statistics, it is £585 per week using the latest available published data from a couple of years ago. That's about £30,000 per year. The minimum amount you have to contribute in the UK unless you opt out is 5% by you with your employer adding a further 3% for a total of 8% of your salary. Now, I am aware that these are calculated slightly differently to how I'm going to be talking about them here, but I'm just trying to make a point and I'm going to keep things super simple. So 8% of £30,420 is £2,433 per year in pension contributions, which is equivalent to about £202.80 per month. Now, I did the math over here. To keep, to, to, to keep things simple, I'm going to assume that People start work at 21, let's say the average person goes to university, which I think at the moment is correct, and they get the, paid this median wage for their entire working life until they retire at age 68. Now I know that some people start working much earlier at 16, and I know some people are going to be earning much less, some people are going to be earning much more, some people are going to start earning a lot less, and then it's going to grow and they're going to be earning way more down the line. I don't want to keep things difficult and have one million scenarios, I'm just going to keep things really basic so that you can understand the point I'm trying to make here. Um, let's assume that your pension grows an average of 8% per year. This is actually pretty reasonable, especially with the new SIP pensions that are arriving. I personally am using the new free trade one. They are currently, I think, back to having an open list after having a short window when they accepted people, but I think it's going to be opening up again very shortly. Um, I think this is a reasonable, somewhat conservative, maybe even in some ways, assumption from my perspective. With monthly contributions of £202.80, the total part at age 68, according to all these assumptions, is going to be one million. £252,000. And according to data that the government themselves publish, 50% or more of people in the UK will actually have pension pots that will be even bigger than this if they continue contributing like everyone tells you that you should be doing. Now, here's the catch. A few years ago, the UK government passed some new legislation which introduced the lifetime allowance for pensions. This is the maximum amount that you can have in your pension pot at the point when you choose to retire. And this allowance is currently set at one million. £73,100. And yes, it does rise with the consumer prices index every single year by a little bit, but I am on purpose using a mod relatively modest assumption of 8% on the returns. I think I could have said that to 9% or even 10%, depending on how you manage those investments over time and the kind of risks you take earlier on versus later on in your portfolio. But I am not doing that. I'm just keeping things really simple here. So for the sake of argument, I have reduced my returns in order to sort of not have to deal with inflation in talking about these numbers. So although it seems like a completely impossible task, when people first think about it, when they're young and you're first starting out and your first job is maybe paying you a very small wage, it seems a huge amount of money to save over one million pounds in your pension. That seems crazy, but the average person in the UK may well have a lot more than that in their pension pot at the point when they retire. Because private pensions based on these defined contributions that we now have are somewhat new. And we haven't had a generation of people who actually started out doing this come to the point when they retire and having those pension pots. So that's probably why it kind of seems really crazy. If your earnings go significantly above the 30,000 power mark that I use in these calculations. You could have a much, much bigger pot when it comes to retirement age, especially if your retirement age is raised. Currently it's set to 68, which is coming in, I think it's in 2039 by the UK government. But if that continues rising like it has been and it will continue to do, then possibly you will have an extra year or two of actually growing a pension pot even further. 
So what happens to money in your pension pot if you go over this lifetime allowance as the average person according to his calculations will? You guessed it, you will be taxed on it and you will be taxed a lot. It's gonna get really ugly. If you take any of it as a lump sum when you retire, because you know when you retire you're allowed to take 25% of your pension tax free, that's kind of the rules, right? But any amount over the lifetime allowance, you will have to pay 55% tax on that money. Yep, you heard that right, 55% tax. Now, if you choose to take it out as an annuity, so sort of the monthly payments instead, you will have to pay 25% tax on it. And then you still have to pay income tax on the remaining money. Now, the money advice service is really, really helpful in explaining that that means for every 1,000 pounds that you have in your pension over this limit, you're actually only gonna get 450 pounds back paid to you in your pension which doesn't sound so great suddenly, does it? Now, <laughs> I would wager a lot of people have never actually heard of this pension lifetime allowance because for some reason when the government introduced it, they didn't do a particularly good job of teaching people, explaining to people, especially young people who maybe don't think too hard about their pensions because the government wants to go and encourage people to do the right thing, which is contribute to your pensions. This is the really odd thing. Using the government's own data, there is a decent chance that more than half of all the people in jobs contributing to pensions for their lives will actually be breaking this lifetime allowance limit because the minimum contribution pension set by the UK government at 8% kind of force you to do so. And then when you can't do anything about it later on, when you already have built up all that pension, you can get hit with a huge tax bill for doing the right thing. Before any people pointed out, yes, most of these pension schemes do allow you to start drawing down the money much earlier at 55. And yes, if your pension pot is growing really, really well, perhaps later on in life, you will actually be able to opt out and stop contributions to stop you going over that limit. I do know these things, I am aware, but I'm guessing that the majority of people will not want to retire at 55 because they're still going to be in work at that point and that's not going to be the actual age. And if you do choose to draw down the money at that point, then your monthly and annual pension amounts that you're going to be buying through the annuity are going to be much less. And so I reckon a lot of people will probably wait somewhat longer before they actually begin drawing down their pensions. And if you're going to be stopping contributions when you're in your 60s, the likelihood is the value of those contributions at that point in time to your budget and to your monthly money that you have disposable is going to be far, far different to when you are young, when you're earning much less money, when you have your first rent or mortgage or whatever, and kids, all of those kind of things. So I, I, I do understand it, but I just think that most people probably need to begin thinking about these about these things slightly earlier. Don't take this the wrong way. Pensions are really important and it is really, really important that people go and plan for their future. You just need to be aware of some of these things around how you need to go and make those plans, around what is the best way to actually put your money to use. Should you go and contribute way more to your pension than the minimum? Or should you maybe find other avenues, like for example, investing your money instead or doing something else? I just thought that this is really useful and because so many people tell me things uh, that maybe go against what I'm saying over here, I just thought it's really critical for people just to be aware of what's happening around them when they're planning for the future. I hope you guys found this useful. If you have, please make sure you go and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it and I'll see you guys later.